today we are going to create a simple program with an input as A and an output as B. And our program will calculate the summary of integers up to input or else up to A. For example, if our A is 5, our output must be 5 sin 4 sin 3 sin 2 sin 1, 15. If our A is 4, our output should be 10. And if our A is 8, our output should be 36. So let's assume that our input is 5. How can we write that down as an equation? The summary is equal to A, which is 5 in our case, plus A minus 1, plus A minus 2, plus A minus 3, plus A minus 4. Let's try to solve this out. And we have our equation. Let's test it. For a equal to 5, we have 5 times 5 minus 10, 15, which is correct. If our input is 4, we have 5 times 4 equals 10, which is correct. If our input is 8, we have 5 times 8 minus 10 makes us 30, which is wrong. So that doesn't work. So the correct way to do it is this. Let's assume that our input is 5. First we write down our equation as we did earlier. And now we write down the same equation but in different order. It's exactly the same equation. So what we can do now is add the first part of the equation with the second part of the equation. And so we have sum plus sum equals a plus a minus 4 plus A minus 1 plus A minus 3 Okay, we have all that, which is this and this added up. 
So look what happens here. If a is 5, we have 5 plus 5 minus 4. So we can write all this like this. A plus 1. Because A is 5 plus 5 minus 4 equals 1. 5 plus 1 equals 6, which is 5 plus 1 equals 6. And the next one is 5 minus 1, which is 5 minus 1, 4, plus 5 minus 3, 2, 4, and 2 is 6. And 6 is also a plus 1. a minus 2 is 5 minus 2, 3, plus 5 minus 2, 3, 3 and 3 makes us 6, and 6 is again a plus 1, because a is 5. Five minus three is two. Five minus one is four. And once again, we have the number six, which we can write as a plus one. Five minus four, one. Plus five, six. Instead of writing six, we write a plus one, which is six. So what we have here, two, Summaries are equal with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 times, or else a multiple a plus 1. We can divide by 2, and our final equation is this simple equation here. Let's test it. If a is 5, we have 5 multiple 6, 30, divided by 2, 15, which is correct. If our input is 4, we have 4 10 which is correct 10 and let's try our final number if input is 8 we have 8 multiple 9 72 divided by 2 36 which is correct and now whatever number we place in a for example 3 we have 3 plus 1 6 6. And now our equation is always correct. So let's try to put this equation in our basic program. That is the easiest way we can implement our equation into a basic language program. And when we run it, it does what it's supposed to do summarize all integers up to the given input. That is another way to do it. You clear the screen, input A, you set B equal to A, and with a for loop you get from 1 to A, and then you subtract 1 and add it to your input, which you set equal to B. If you do that, 
it won't work. P needs to be a steady variable and therefore needs to be out of the circle for to next. So that won't work. Another way, a third way to do it is this, which could be the most elegant way. The difference is that instead of adding up all integers from 1 to A, you add up the integers from A to 1 by subtracting 1 on each circle. And the fourth and final version that is worth mentioning is this. All those versions of basic language will probably have the exact same assembly code and the exact same machine code when assembled. The instructions that the CPU needs to execute will most probably be the same no matter which version of BASIC we use. As for the C version of our program, I made just one version in C. So first we include our uh, STDO library, which will be able to recognize what the scanf and printf commands are about. And we have three variables, or else three integers, a, i, and sum, which equals zero. The program calls the scanf function, which will just ask for an input that will be stored in A. And similar to basic, we have a for loop. First we set i to 1. And while i remains smaller or equal to A, summarize our previous sum with i, which will be 4, 3, 2, 1, and 0 in the case that our a is 5. The loop closes and we have another call to the printf command which will just print the summary on the screen and the program returns or else exits. The t variable that you see in both scanf and printf commands is just the parameter that specifies the length of our string and some other details. In our case, it specifies a decimal integer. So here is our uh, assembly 86 language. Here we are defining the string that is passed to the scanf command. This string here. We save ebp register for later usage. We set register ebp to point to the stack frame. We subtract 12 bytes from the stack pointer, ESP. This allocates 12 bytes of space to be used for variables. Note that the dollar sign here merely indicates an immediate operand. Unlike with other assemblers, it does not indicate a hexadecimal number this is instead done with 0x prefix. The Lial command here computes the address of uh, EBP and stores it into the AX register. AX is pushed on the stack as an argument to the following scan function call. This instruction pushes the address of string D onto the stack, preparing a scanf call. And then we call the scanf function. And this is just a call to the scanf function in its C99 standard variant. This is the most important instruction of our program. It compares our input number, which was A, if you remember, with an incremented number. And if the incremented number is equal or bigger than the input number. Let's say, for example, that the input number is 5. If the incremented number it is more than 5, for example, 5, 6, 7, then it should stop because it already summarized all the numbers up to our input number. So the program needs to end. And so it jumps to L3, where the program prints the result on the screen and exits. If the incremented number is not equal or bigger than the input number, which means 
that if A is, for example, 5 and we are currently at number 2, we still need to add number 3 and number 4 because the summary of 5 is 5 plus 4 plus 3 plus 2 plus 1. So in that case, loop and do another addition to our input. So if we summarized all the numbers that we should summarize and we jumped to L3, we need to set the variables that will be used by the printf command. So with push instruction here we set the z variable and with this push we set our d argument to print function and then we call the print function and then we set the ax register to zero. We clear the stack frame so the top of the stack holds the return address and we return. The value returned from your function is what is held in a axe register as per calling convention. This is also why a axe was cleared a bit earlier with setting it to zero. Okay, as you understand, uh, assembly is uh, on a totally different level than, uh, than high level uh, programming languages. And now we are going to convert this to pure machine code. Here is our clear hex dump. And this is our program in binary. The language that the CPU understands. And let's check, for example, our two last instructions. Leave and return. Return has the opcode C3 in 32-bit assembly language. And in case you wonder why 64 bits are x64 but 32 bits are written as x86 or else why Windows create this folder named program files x86 for storing 32 bit programs the answer is because when they made the processor 8086 back in the 80s it was the first 16-bit processor and the name stuck since then and even later on when the processors became 32 bits. So the return instruction which has the opcode C3 in hexadecimal gives us the number 11000011 in binary which is what we see here. 1100011 in binary. And if we check our previous instruction with number 11001001, it gives us the hexadecimal number C9, which is what we see in our hex dump. C9 is the leave command. So our program was converted successfully from draft to basic to C to assembly to hex machine code and finally to binary machine code which is of course the lowest level of abstraction.